It happened a long time ago. And now that I shouldn't be afraid anymore, I'm going to tell it bit by bit, as I remember it. What happens to a man when he leads a life where goodness doesn't exist, and at times he feels like his heart will burst. Your life is no longer yours. You aren't free anymore. And your claws can't do any harm. Prison is so bitter, and there's such a taste of viciousness within its walls. This is our story. The men who have spent many years filled with loneliness. Do you know what a madronia is? It's a tree that each month, when the moon moves across the heavens like a silver cat's tail, the witches come to visit. And in the good trees, they cast their spells of joy. And the folks that know say, well, the ones whose hair is as white as corn silk, that at every new moon, the flowers of the madronia tree are full of the enchantment and good luck that the witches left on their previous visit. And that's why I went to the mountain and came back with a bunch of madronia flowers from Maria Elena. She was so fair and her eyes were so bright with the clearness and light of the clouds in the afternoon sky of an Indian summer. She had a timeless beauty. There was a man who pursued her harder than all the others put together. And he was respectfully called Don Miguel. Take my horse. I can't read. Doesn't matter. I'm a friend of the president. And as of this moment, the supreme authority of this pueblo. Tell that to everyone. The supreme authority. Her hair was blonde and so beautiful. That many times in my memory, I've compared it to a ray of sunshine resting on a rock in the middle of a stream. It was also long and soft, like the pretty silk that grows around the begonias on the edge of the marsh. <laughs> well, may the Lord be with you, Senor Martinez. Afternoon, Juanito. Come on in. I'm going to put the flowers in a vase. Did you hear we've got a new supreme authority? Guess it's the man who came on horseback. Hope he does good, now that the president gave him so much power over us. But I don't know why he needs authority in a place where nothing ever happens. Whenever we went to a dance, and the ranchers around there gave parties on every occasion they could think of, I remember I'd suffered a lot because the older men watched her and flirted with her in front of me. They spoke to her with ease and charm, like I'd never been able to do. For those fine phrases and compliments, I knew nothing about.
Good day, Mary Elena. Good day, Don Miguel. Did you have fun last night? The music was very beautiful. No more than you. And I dreamed about you in my sleep last night. And it was lovely having you in my dreams. This morning I thought, Miguel, you really ought to make those dreams come true. How about doing it? What? Have you gone deaf and dumb? You'll have time to laugh when you learn that love's a good thing. Did my daughter tell you about Don Miguel? Yes. Why don't you get married? Elena's 15 years old now. As your wife, he'll stop bothering her so much. And soon he'll be able to forget her. Yes, but first let me get together a little money for us. Good day, Senor Martinez. May God always be with you, Senor. Good day, Don Miguel. How's my little pigeon, Mary Elena? Pretty good. Pretty good. Every day a bit more lovely. So I've noticed. She's about the right age for a man, I'd say. Yes. She'll be marrying Juanito soon. Juanito? He's still a baby chick. That little pigeon will have to mate with a rooster of experience. How many stars do you think there are in the sky? About a hundred. No, there are many more. And when we learn to count to more than a hundred, we'll know. You better start counting. One, two, three, four, five, yes. six, seven. seven. Twenty. Twenty-two. May the Lord be with you, Don Miguel. What are you doing here? Taking a walk, Don Miguel. I'm sure you're lying. She's coming with me under arrest. Don't touch her! <coughs> Don't be such a tiger with my women, pretty boy. Miguel. What do you want? Where's my daughter? Tell me for the love of God. You want to take her home? The only thing I want is to be able to see her again. She's at the Juarez Ranch. Go get her. Don Miguel, a maiden cannot be taken and violated the way you did. I ask you to please restore her honor. You're right. The leftover women were made for all the men who were born weaklings. So tell that cowherd Juanito to marry her the way God wishes.
then I don't want to see him around here again. Because the next time I do, I'll use my machete on him where it hurts. As for Maria Elena, there's nothing to do about it. What's happened now? I saw that man. Where's Maria Elena? I'll tell you the way he told me. Tell that cowherd Juanito that I'm giving her back so that he can marry her as God wishes. He has to go for her at the Juarez Ranch, and he must leave the Pueblo forever. If you still love her and want her, I'll go with you. in my brain, like something that you can't and you mustn't forget. Behind us, the wind continued to cry as it passed through the trees, as if it were trying to scream about a hidden sorrow. The rest of the afternoon, I spent with my heart stuck in the middle of my throat. I had never even learned to cry, to find a release for my feelings. And so I passed the hours thinking and thinking until there was nothing that hadn't received the sharp cut of my axe. my machete, it would have been easy to slice away even a thought. 
She never said anything. But I felt her silent pain. It made her suffer and was always there under the shadow of her tearful eyes, like the drops that gather on the leaves of the plants after the storm has passed. Let's go to the mountains to cut flowers. We'll go tomorrow. I have to finish the fence for the chicken coop. Why haven't my parents and my sister come to visit? They were here last week. It's very difficult to get out here. You have to row a lot. Your parents have never come. One of these days, we'll go to the Pueblo. One of these days. Are you happy? Mm-hmm. The months came, and the months went. And the joys arrived after the months. And with them, the sorrows went away. The priest is going to come on Saturday to marry the couples who are living together. You think you'd like to get married? What for? There are plenty of pretty pigeons here to my liking. After you took Maria Elena, all the pigeons 13 and 14 years old began flirting with you, Don Miguel. So I've noticed. And a few of them are ready to be tasted. What about Maria Elena? Have you seen her again? things with my pretty pigeon.
you guys now move along hurry up now get moving pick up your feet come on don't look at me like that move along now in you go come on don't bunch up around the door stay in line let's keep some order in here get ready for two more now pay attention keep them moving in here hurry up that's it that's it One coming in. Open Let's the go. gate. Let's go. Line up. Line up. Come on, handsome. Move your ass. Ah! Come on. Let's get out of here. What happened? Stay where you are. Stay, Stay put it. We'll hurt. blow your heads off. No. Nobody, Nobody ah! knows about him. He's no good. Get him out. Ah! 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 Bastard that keeps on crying. My brother, Gerardo, he's about to die. Shut your face and let the kid die in peace. Hey, Juan, divide up your brother's food for all of us. If he can't live much longer, what's he eating for? Hey, you pig, give me some food, too.
brother has passed away. My brother has passed away. My brother Gerardo is dead. He's ice cold. Why don't we try to keep it a secret for about three or four days? Because they'll still give us his meals. The stench would be unbearable. Oh, how delicate you are. The smell of the latrine is worse. Guards! Guards! There's a dead man in here! Shut your fire oh, down! <laughs> I'll call a squad of undertakers. Open up. They've got another one to amuse themselves with. Yeah. They might show respect, at least for the dead. If they touch my brother, they'll be dead. young girl. Pass around the water and nothing more. Come on, get going. Just look at that poor old man. That's the worst torture of all. Venancio punished him because he tried to kill a cellmate who wanted to screw him while he was asleep. And now he passes out the water without drinking himself. Men, pick him up.
Come on. Keep moving. Get the lead out. Hurry up. Move along. doesn't sink. I've dissected everything. Even dogs. And this isn't going to be the start of my bad luck. It'll work. Don't you worry. At five o'clock, we'll be finished. Nothing will happen. <sighs> Everyone's forbidden to mistreat those birds by orders of the Commandant. Come on, you filthy scum. We're behind schedule. Get moving. I am Nicanor. Oh, yes, I know. I promised one afternoon last week to help you. What do you want? A bird vendor is planning to escape today. Thank you, sir. Time for roll call. You idiot! Don't you know it's forbidden to hurt the pelicans?
soldiers. today, children. Return to the prison. missing. Colonel. No one's missing. Get moving. Right face. Right face. Let's Forward. Come on. on. Come on. Get moving. Take Come on, on out there. He's driving us all crazy again. Shut up, you son of a bitch! Guitar, huh, fella? You don't lend someone a guitar, friend. You might lend a woman, but never a guitar. And uh, just how much do you think your instrument's worth? A hundred. A wound from the iron. Take him to the Irismith to be cured. You two over there, come here. Help him. Escort, give us a hand. Let's go. <laughs> here comes another one for you, big boy. full of gangrene. Take it oh. easy, honey. Have to cut it off. Cut! Cut it! Cut it, my ass! You won't cut it off! Let me go, you sons of bitches! No, you damn coward bastards! I... No! Please don't cut off my leg for the love of heaven! Thank you. 
for a half a pound of tobacco, you can have him. If you want to try him out, Mama Juanita will sell him to you. What were you talking about this afternoon with Raul? About my brother. The chief undertaker composed and signed his death warrant. Come on, get to work! Him. The first lousy son of a bitch that takes a step toward me, I'll kill! Hold your fire! <sighs> Stay where you Don't are! Don't get any closer! Him. Hear me out, son. If you don't surrender, those bloodthirsty gods will surely tear you apart. I beg you, son, give me the iron bar right now. I promise by my military word of honor that no one will harm you. Stand back! I gave my word and it will be kept! Take him away without hurting him! Hold! Open the ranks. Soldiers, face front. Face front. As you see, I gave my word. But the discipline of the prison must be kept, no matter what the cost. <laughs> Let go of me, you damn fool! Let go of me! Ah! Keep still! As you were! Follow me! Dearest nephew, I, nephew, I have never asked you for anything. I have never asked you for anything. Never? I have never asked you for anything. Anything. But it's that now, I need it very much. In another week, I'll be out free. Stupid judge acquitted me. What will your wife say? What do I care? The bitch took another man three years ago. And now the judge says I'm innocent. Wait a minute. 
You write it however you like. The main thing is that he sends the money. And what do you want the money for? Hmm. I want to buy the guitar from the Negro Smith. I've heard that it's really marvelous to witness the way that these men live in this prison. You're very lucky because until now, no woman has ever entered this prison. Oh, what an honor. Why are they beaten like that? They aren't really beaten. They are often able to break the rivet they have on their feet or their wrists that closes the irons. They find many ingenious ways to do it. Sometimes they fasten their irons with a new clasp that they make out of a piece of metal like a tin plate or a big nail. And that's what the guard is doing, making sure that the irons sound the same. It's a way to prevent escapes. What is that, Colonel? The inmates also have an orchestra. Something that proves the cheerfulness of their lives here. They sing and dance happily in prison. Captain, bring the orchestra. Yes, Colonel. All the orchestra, outside. Where are you going? That piece of junk guitar was playing in the band. Outside. Come on. Not you, faggot queens. for you. Play kneeling down.
quiet down. I'll say the hustles. Just six months ago, this letter arrived for you. Take it. Here are the hundred paces you asked for. Now give me the guitar. I'll tell you the real truth. I was only joking. I love it more than my life. No, you weren't joking. You told me a hundred pesos, and here they are. Keep your word to him. You yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your word. Keep your word. All right, I'll keep my word as I said. One the handkerchief, too? No, you keep the handkerchief for yourself. Thank you. Finally, I'll be able to live in peace. You instrument of the devil. It's been years since I've had the honor of seeing you, Colonel Vargas. So it has. Not since the times in military school in the Republic of Chile. A whiskey, Colonel? No, thank you. The President has sent you this. I can't believe this. That bastard of a president plainly accuses me of beatings and killings of the prisoners. It's that the family of Jorge Barrientos heard that he died of a beating and was thrown in the sea. And since they're friends of the president... No one has assassinated here. And as for Jose Barrientos, he was killed while trying to escape. And I have it recorded in the book. He and all the others who suffer the same fate. Accident or not, the truth is I was given the task of notifying you but the General President of the Republic has ordered me to take immediate command of the island. And that you're to present yourself at headquarters tomorrow morning. Tell that old asshole of your General that on this island I'm in command. Gentlemen, please. You'll be sorry for this. I swear you're crazy, Venezio. Your mother will be the sorry one to have borne you if you return here. Tell this to the President. That as of today, this island is a free republic!
Police! Present arms! I speak to all of you, my beloved sons, to bring the good tidings today to one and all that I, Benancio Salvatierra Lopez, Colonel of the 1st Regiment of the Cavalry, Commandant of the Penitentiary of this island, I say this before some brainless idiot starts to imagine that I'm in the military for the fun of it. At this moment, with the help of the good Lord and the almighty inspiration of my conscience, I declare freedom, sovereignty, and independence for this island, and I proclaim it a free republic. I name myself president, warning that if anyone disagrees with this nomination, that means you, the jackals of the guard, executioners of the slaughterhouse, slaves to the uniform. The same goes for you, my beloved sons, the swindlers and assassins, rapists, maniacs, sodomites, thieves, criminals, degenerates, locked in here by order of a government of despotic tyranny, Speak out now, because I'll hold court-martial for him for treason against the new form state to be shot at once. And now, through the faculty of my new powers as your president of the Republic, from this moment on, I forbid any form whatever of slavery. The penitentiary of this island is now dead. Long live the Republic! I declare all of you the founders of the newly formed Republic, and I accept with great joy the offer you have made me to be the very first president. I wish to repeat, that if anyone does not agree with this, they should make it known at once and be sent to be shot. All the prisoners are now free men. But any one citizen who wishes to abandon this island without permission from the council of the general staff will be shot. Now repeat after me. Viva la República! Viva! Viva me! Viva me! No, you idiots! Viva General Venancio! Viva General Venancio! General. That's not bad. That gives me the same rank as a stupid president. And because the title expresses the wishes of the people, I accept. Come out. You're free by orders of General Valencio. I got so accustomed to this damn thing, I'm going to miss it. <laughs> It's the same for all of us. <laughs> Who's the officer who knows about boats and sailing? I name you Minister of the Navy. You'll answer to me with your life for the five boats that we possess. Yes, Mr. President. Lieutenant. 
I name you Minister of Defense. Train the prisoners, but don't issue arms. Yes, Mr. President. One of the prisoners was formerly a school teacher. I've been thinking about naming him Minister of Education and Foreign Affairs. Locate him. His name is Nicanor. As of this moment, you will occupy the honored post of Minister of Education and Foreign Affairs of our independent republic. See that he has the proper clothes. Come on. Colonel Bonanza has gone off his rocker. And it's imperative we take him prisoner. He has all the inmates on his side. They don't count. Even if that were so, we sworn our loyalty to the president. We'll arrest him. Have your arms ready. If it's necessary, we'll have to kill him. And all those who are with him. Stay where you are or I'll have you shot. I accuse you of insubordination and planning a rebellion. In a state of war, you will be shot as traitors whenever I please. Take them to the guardhouse and lock them up. Spying, sneaking, informing, and betraying, and loyalty to the new government, I appoint you captain. Your very first mission will be to design and manufacture medals to be used for decorating you and all the brave soldiers in our forces before every battle.
worst possible thing they could do was to take off the chains and give us hope again. What's the use of our being free if we're all poisoned and bitter inside? It's nearly 15 years now that I haven't seen my sons. You have ample powers to bring about the signing of a treaty with the president. In no moment must you show weakness. And remember that a great army on the brink of war is behind you. The destiny of the fatherland lies in your hands. Propose a toast to the new republic. Because I have never enjoyed doing anything halfway. I, Benancio Salvatierra Lopez, elected president by the free will of all the people. After much deep thinking and studying conscientiously the problem, have arrived at the following conclusion. It is necessary for us to have our very own flag. And who knows? Even our own anthem. Quite comfortable, Your Excellency, Minister of Education and Foreign Affairs of the Independent Republic. You'll have to forgive me and understand that matters of state have kept me from receiving you at the palace. I was told that General Venancio has sent you here to tell me something about the revolution. And you will see for yourself what will happen to that criminal. I've already sent him my answer. I was sent here to report to you, sir, about the reception of beatings that awaited us and that he was going to request permission of Congress because he wanted the honor of coming to visit you. Oh! Was he serious? Bring the cannon and put it over there and point it out that way.
across the starboard bow. Turn it around. Help me. This is a thousand meters. Then bear five to the right. like they surrendered. Stupid cowards. This is our best chance. The first thing that Captain Astua will do when he gets out of prison is put all of us in chains again. Yeah, Juanito, whatever you say. On the other side of those mountains, life is beautiful. And it's free. By direct order of your president, no one is to pay any more attention to Colonel Venancio. And you are advised that if in 20 minutes you don't surrender, all the prisoners, as well as the soldiers, will be blown to bits by the cannon. For every one of you, our good president has given his solemn oath to forgive and pardon you. Therefore, I ask for you to put down your arms. this whole side. You heard him. Come on. Like snakes, let them burn. Save us. They won't be. They won't be able to reach us. The wind's blowing this way. Yeah. 
hard. We couldn't reach them even in the boat. Tomorrow they'll be on one of those little islands. If the sharks don't decide to eat them tonight. Don't swim anymore. Let the current pull you along. Where will the current take us? We'll come to the island of San Jeronimo, I would guess. It's all over, Juanito. It's all over. The life of the dam that we were leading will never be again. Never. It'll never be again. It's over. It's all over now. Two desperate men have just escaped from the prison. They're accused of committing many crimes. They are very dangerous and capable of murdering anyone. Commander of the Harbor Patrol hereby warns the public against two escaped convicts. For their capture, dead or alive, we offer the following reward. Two pounds of rice, three pounds of potatoes, two pounds of coffee, three pounds of sugar, two pounds of cocoa powder, one can of sardines, ten packs of cigarettes, one dozen boxes of matches and three silver pesos in cash. farther and we'll be on the beach. Look, a shark. I see them. Keep on swimming without missing a stroke. The same rhythm. Don't splice the water. We mustn't attract their attention.
question. Uh, Juanito. For, for three days now, they haven't flooded any water since you both escaped. Since you both escaped, haven't brought any water. How did you learn about our escape? I, I heard the cannon yesterday. The patrol passed by here. But they didn't leave me any water or food because they said you could come and take it away from me. Take, take it away from me. I know him kind of Die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Take hold of his leg. that you die in the sea, and not here. This man was sentenced to be killed. I might at least have some hope in the ocean. If I remain here, there's absolutely no hope for me. The problem is that the blood will attract the sharks. It'll be better that way. We had some rotten shark meat with us, which usually keeps them away. The waves were so strong that we lost all of it. I'm going to put this marker here. When the sun gets to it, start swimming south. And by then, we should be able to reach that island over there. On second thought, leave him where he is so the sharks can finish with him. Dead men don't interest me anyway. It's a finish worthy of the bastards. Two pounds of rice, three pounds of potatoes, two pounds of coffee, three pounds of sugar, two pounds of cocoa powder, one can of sardines, ten packs of cigarettes, one dozen boxes of matches, and three silver pesos in cash. That's what life was worth for a convict on the island of lonely men. <laughs> <laughs> 